Yes, yesterday the TENS train left the station and in some style it has to be said. Today it picks up speed. Welcome back everybody to sessions four and five of round one of the World TENS series from here in Bermuda 2020. It's great to have you with us. Miami Sun against the Ohio Aviators at the start of day two of our inaugural World Ten Series. But the Rhinos, well, they had a glorious day yesterday. Three from three. Players hailing from the Rhino Rugby Academy in California. Mikey Teo leads them out. Our referee for this one is Scott Steele, been in charge of two MLR finals. Day two of the World Ten Series is kicked off. And the sun not in any bit of sun right now. Yesterday we were in the blazing sunshine, but uh, the conditions are a little bit more conducive to these athletes putting everything on the line in terms of just getting a little bit of breeze to uh, cool them down. And they will no doubt have been having plenty of chats over their evening meals last night over how the tactics will uh, the ball need to the be ground, applied. Mate. Boyer. Oh, he's lost that. Was it knocked out of his hand? The referee is happy with him to play on. They're going to try and get through the gap and then find the ball away to O'Keefe. That was brilliantly worked. Just waiting on the delay to get it away. O'Keefe into the 22. Miami Sun on the attack. Looking right, looking to try and dance their way round. Lala Sava has come alive. Penalty Sun. And that was... Uh, a little look. We're just going to have a little Time look off. here, and uh, I think Time off, boys. we need to just check in with the TMO as to uh, whether that was a bit of foul play, here, possibly. Please. TMO. Lovely offload. But then as soon as the tackle is made and then tipped, that's the danger. There you, you go, go, into Scott. your shoulder, into your neck. OK. Yeah. That should be a yellow. Yep. Two. There you go. Two. No, time, no, wait there. Time's off. So yellow card, then. Zach Bonte is uh, given two minutes in the sin bin. No, not yet. <laughs> Penalty Rhinos. Now in a tight game such as this. Oh, Tio's gone quickly. Yeah, play on. Referee's happy for them to play on. Oh, and they are in for the try. Brilliant quick thinking from the USA Eagle. Although we have a little check, I think, here from Scott Green. OK, perfect. OK. Is it Courtney Venar who's got the score? Yes. Try is awarded. And the Rhinos break the deadlock. Well, there's been a lot of positive comment around this Rhinos team, but that is tactical execution personified. They brought in six players, four of which went into that scrum, which they won. And look at that reaction. Mikey Teo not hanging around. He taps it. The ball shifted across. A lovely bit of deception to score out wide. The crucial point now, giving chance for Mayer to add a couple more to the tally. Lalasava. Oh, and O'Keefe, and O'Keefe might be away here. He's just been scragged by Venar, the try scorer. Attacking one minute, having to defend the next, but the Sun right on the line here. They've looked to try and step around the corner and go through Ball's there. with Tuamo Aloha. But he's been driven back. Now we'll see the upfront stuff that Tens can also offer. Or do, are they going to find a little bit more width and get over? They are. M Marcus Satavu, the USA Sevens man, cruises over. And this is conversion jeopardy at its best. They've now got to make a big decision, Rob Vickerman, with less than two minutes on the clock to try and win the game. We're from, boss. We go here. Well, they're looking to level things up, hovering around the red. Means they've got the two points. They want to go three to get a lead and five to really extend it. Look at the discussion going on here. Yeah. David Ross is having a little discussion. James Stokes is coming on. If they go two, then we go to the shootout. We've yet to see no, that we'll here. We'll and this looks like the option. No, you've got 10 seconds, mate. Oh, my goodness. Come straight to we me. may have the first World 10 Series shootout on the cards if James Stokes can hit this and if there are no more scores before the end of the game. I'm thinking ahead here, Rob Vickerman. And rightly so. Never before in rugby have we had these types Ten of seconds. questions. Cannot wait to see the answers. Stokes needs to nail this first of all into the wind. OK, we have a restart. Oh, and he's missed it. Oh, goodness me. OK, well, we won't have the off. shootout. It's just the five points for the Miami Sun. Time is off. It is a final score in our first game of day two. 
of the Rhino 7, Miami Sun 5. Our next match, it is Phoenix against the Asia Pacific Dragons. My name's Nick Heath, alongside me is former England captain, England 7's captain, Rob Vickerman. Yeah, the option from the penalty then is either to take a quick tap, ask for a scrum, or to kick the ball into the corner. They've gone for the corner, they've gone for the catch and drive, and they're over the line. JP Doyle is not convinced that it's over. JP Earloff is uh, being spoken to by JP Doyle here. For the second time, go away. Right. One JP to another. To stop the try. It's a penalty try. Side entry to stop the try. Okay. So side entry is what JP Doyle has decided would have stopped the try, and therefore it is deemed a professional foul. A try would have been scored without such an intervention. It's a penalty try. You're on the ground. Mike for the Asia Pacific Dragons. Hole was just maybe opening up there, and Tolitao comes straight through it. They've got some numbers here, if they can make it work. Saramatonga, oh, that's brilliant! Straight through. As a marine biologist is the big Fijian. And he dived over the line there. And we've seen some lovely interplay. The big man in the middle just buying that time and then the three on two. Big love to the people watching around the world. Love that celeb, big smiles on faces. And once again, the gun Tommy Bell with only three steps gets to drill hit all the way. He's got it right. Our first five pointer of day two goes to the Asia Pacific Dragons and the boot of Tommy Bell. Big moments this then. Can the aviators five steal man, a win? Five man in the same way that they lost one to the Royals yesterday. Probably our first nine-man line-out. I'd definitely be putting everyone in this if I were Ohio. Get as much weight behind this pack as you can. Campbell will be straight in there, I'm sure. They brought it down with Hatting. And now they get the drive on. Aviators looking to do the job. Is the ball down? Yes, it is, says JP Doyle. Try time for the Aviators. And the score is levelled as the hooter goes. Well, now we know what they need. A simple one-pointer from the blue spot. And that's exactly where Ben Seymour is headed. Two massive moments for the Ohio Aviators and both of them from driving malls. This game of 10s is swinging far more towards the line of 15s. And many people expecting to see how tight it would be personified by this big pack playing to their strengths. Huge men. So tight in their maul, and that driving shield just not able to be stopped. Sima with the one-pointer and a winning one-pointer. Ohio Aviators losing yesterday by one point to the Royals, but sneaking victory against the Asia Pacific Dragons with one point today. Brilliant game. Couple of technical timeouts in there and a bit of conversion jeopardy to go with it. Driving more in full effect, and the Aviators will feel vindicated for their strategy. They get themselves the win. Our second game on day two finishes the Ohio Aviators 11, the Asia Pacific Dragons 10. Our third game of the morning, then. A chance to have a look at the London Royals, who managed to enjoy... Well, they had a bit of a mixed day yesterday as well, but... Uh, they would have been pleased to get that win against the Ohio Aviators. Nicking that win by 11 points to 10. Look at this for a rip, though, from the Carpentier. Brilliant from him. Numbers here for the Royals. Ross Neal, chance to get in the corner. Oh, brilliant defence from the Phoenix. But the gather was strong as well. Devante on a Jaffe doing just what was needed to be able to smuggle that ball over the line. Bit of shimmy, looks who's going to touch. And how about that for some juggling skills there? Come on, sir. 
Oh, AJ Davis showing the strength to get through, just managing to evade the tackle of Robbie Chalmers. Brilliant from Davis and brings up the Royal second score. Now, are they going to look for any more than the one pointer? They seem to be uh, bringing the ball back a little further. Sailing very nicely. Oh, that's brilliant from Emery. Mitchell, oh, he's gone for the chip, and Emery, uh, Bowden, uh, sorry, Bowden is all over it. Brilliant from Tom Bowen. Going for a five again. He's got great pace. Tom Bowen, seasoned veteran on the World 7 Series, and he showed it in spades there. It was brilliantly worked, and now Emery wants to make this another five points. 20 points in a couple of minutes. He looks to have stroked it well again. Oh, it's another one! Mitchell does well to drag in the defence and then send it through Northcote Green to, 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 to Carpentier. Support back inside, but the pass left a little to be desired. Is Kitsia going to be the one to help make it happen? He'll pop it up to Northcote Green for a second bite, and Jimmy Haley will be the man to score for the London Royals. The Carpentier shows that seventh pace he's got for a big man. Look at that outside. And this is what support play is all about. Northcote Green, we've already spoken about him. He's inside. Then it's the footballing prowess of Kutze. And Northcote Green back in again. And then it's a walk-in. Mitchell will streak away, or at least he'll hope to. He's being given chase, plays it back in field for AJ Davis, waits for the ball to sit up. The wind is sending it all over the place, but Davis will have enough to get over and round off the game. London Royals will pass the 40-point mark. That man, Rich the Carpentier, involved in a lot of what the Royals did well. It's a full-time score to round off this morning's session of the London Royals 44 and the Phoenix unable to get on the score sheet. We are ready to bring you our next game. Our second session of day two, our final session of round one of the inaugural World 10 series. Sees the Miami Sun running out with the Ohio Aviators. It's an all-American affair. And this one could be fascinating to call. Huge shove from the Aviators. Miami Sun trying to control it, but they've ended up getting the free kick. So they will go quickly with Wes Teo. Teo straight into Bailey, bounces off once, but then the combination of Bailey and Hatton bringing him to ground. All over the top from Larson, then Satavu, who's flicked it back in field. Boyer, it's all harem scarum stuff. Matthew Houston, someone needs to put their foot on it, and the Aviators are tearing into every tackle. Oh, my goodness, but they are getting it away, and Van der Merwe straightens. He's got one man to beat. This is a sensational score from the Miami Sun. Balls out the back of the hand, the ball over the line. Have a look at this offload. Lavasala out the back door, non-looker, wrong way to DTH Van der Merwe. Potentially one of the standout moments, certainly of today, that is brilliant. The questions here tactically are, do you compete against it or do you just try and drive them back? They're opting for the drive back if they can manage it. They might need to add a few more men in, though, because uh, the aviators come flying forwards and then the mall is collapsed illegally. So now O'Toole is going to try and go himself and he has managed to get the ball down. Brilliant strength from the aviators hooker. Very nicely done. Aviators on the board, and again, we get the chance to see whether conversion jeopardy will allow them to nip their way in front. Well, it's a well-trodden path, isn't it, for this Ohio team? Kicking to the corner, getting this magnificent driving ball set up. As you can see, three guys in the front, Bailey shielding well, two in behind, the perfect arrow. The spearhead that leaves a gap for Tom Tool, there he goes, driving down, gets it over the line, and now Q Benzema to stroll on the pitch and try and double that score. Well, this is not an easy kick. The wind may be at his back, but it's uh, it's coming slightly across field as well, just away from our camera position, over towards that sort of 
far left right hand corner so he's got to get this right it's sailing very nicely that is a solid five pointer from Ben Seema he's continuing with that form that we saw yesterday as he bagged the first five pointer and he puts the aviators in front in the game at half time at the break it is the Miami Sun six Ohio aviators ten We are very, very grateful indeed for the effort put in to get this World 10 series underway. Maggie will go back and try and help tidy things up alongside Tian Lutz. But it's a penalty to the Miami Sun. Now, this is really fascinating. We've gone quickly. Sun, get the ball away. What are the options? They've got a whole load of width here. It's going to be a run in for the Sun. The try. It's a brilliant one for Tuamo Aloha. Quick thinking from the Sun. And they tear into the corner. Well, Tuamalolo benefited on the left, but have a look at what happened on the right hand side of the pitch. This is it. DTH van der Merwe not content with just the effort. Look at the drive through. Houston joining him. And both of those players gaining that ball back meant that this could happen way out on the other side. Lovely link play. Passes in the middle. They know where the ball's got to go. They get it there quickly. And that's all you need. They have got themselves to a memorable second win in the competition. Brilliantly done. The Miami Sun steal victory. This one finishes the Sun 11, Ohio Aviators 10. The Phoenix against the Asia Pacific Dragons. Welcome to our penultimate game of the World 10 Series Round 1 League Games. We've been Sunday, Monday. We're doing a few other things differently on the pitch, so, you know, we've got a little unconventional off it as well. Now they've played it in for Nakatini. And going off down the right-hand side to Itavaki, able to put the last pass away for Sanitonga. He is the man to finish for the APDs, and he bags them another over the course of the last couple of days. The first of this game, it's five points on the board for the Asia Pacific Dragons and Lino Sanitonga. Well, Sanitonga is so happy in outside space. All you've got to do is get the ball there to him, and it's from a lovely play in the middle. The <laughs> deftness and carries in the middle. Combining well, that fastball was said about that ball not wanting to be on the floor for longer than two seconds. It wasn't. Billy plays it across. And that is an outcome to celebrate. Big kiss of the ball. And over to Tommy Bell to look to put his mark on it. Phoenix, clear the way, please. Puts his foot through it. Oh, that's another top, top effort. Five points takes the APDs up to ten. Bell, oh, the little show, nearly went through the gap himself. Then it's Robinson. Robinson out for Wakelin. Wakelin looking out a little further. Nara Matonga, and then away once more. It's going to be another score for the APDs. Brilliant effort, and Samisoni will be the man to touch down. That right-hand side is getting some wear here for the APD. Again, sucky plays in the middle, big men running hard, and then... The Make passing out in front, Phoenix. lovely link play, big men with skills. And still alien for players not to think about having to run underneath the posts. They can put it down wherever, it does not matter. Tommy Bell lining up now with just his effortless kicking style. Free Green gets them out of the way. Bell, one step, two step. Wallop. Oh, good nudge, says Scott Green. Bell, Alessio whips it out to that right side and then a little bit of pace and a little show and go. And then cutting back in field, oh, the offload didn't quite make it. But they are going to get away. APDs right down the touchline and they are coming alive, Rob Vickerman. 
Well, I'm glad he scored Look that because that, that is one of the most outrageous pickups on the fly from Nale. There's the big get off me. The ball goes on the floor and scooped up just with one hand and then the feet to back it up. Just stop it. Little shorter ball that time from Robinson. And then the support on the outside from Tommy Bell. And the APDs are cruising in this one. They're making it look so easy. And it might just be a moment for other teams to take notice. Yes, the Phoenix have got a few ringers in to try and help them through. But the APDs, when they want to turn it on, are just looking very comfortable. Palamo. APD's advantage, it's not what you want to hear when you're uh, up against them, but you throw it away momentarily. Okay, Alessio pumps one dummy, then goes for Sanitonga, starts to cruise back in field. He's being chased, oh, gets it away to Jamil Robinson, who had work to do to try and regather. Then the support from Sanitonga, then Alessio on the shoulder. Alessio will get away and score. It was made in the Pacific <laughs> Islands and finished by the Samoan. Brilliant work from the APDs. Maffi Tuatavaki, just trying to find room through Samasoni to Palamo. Samasoni links again brilliantly, that's lovely. And there's a little bit of room on the left for Nale to get away. Or it's Kutsishvili, the Georgian. Got on his bike, down the touchline. Really lovely interplay from the Dragons once again. Happy Nikatini, one of those who was a memorable contributor in the game. It's finished, Phoenix nil, APDs 44. Our final game of the weekend. It's a Monday, but it's our weekend. We're calling it that. The Rhinos against the London Royals will round off round one of the World Tens series. And what a contest this is destined to be. Matthews, not the easiest ball to pick up on the bootstraps for Jake Campy. It's great comms out there from JP Dorr, just telling the Royals when to go, when to leave the ball. Outside, boys. You got to the point of having to use De Carpentier's nickname, didn't he, to uh, call him <laughs> off it? Tio. Oh, it's brilliantly picked out in the pass from Ross Neal and the London Irish flyer. Man Mountain careers down the field and Rhino rugby pressure has turned into London Royals try. It's Ross Neal on the scoreboard. Dan. Straight in goes Tio. It's really good continuity here from the Rhinos. It's how they've been scoring their games and how they've been winning their games so far through the World 10 series. Will the gap open up? The last moment, it is knocked forwards. Goodness me. Such good patience from the Rhinos. What a great continuity. And then that bar of soap just catches him out of the end. White line fever at its best. Do they run it? They do. Oh, Foden's gone for the little chip through. Tom Mitchell to try and gather it and score. <laughs> Referee JP Doyle has given the 22. How close is this from Mitchell? Oh, nearly gets there. Fingertips away. The over and Rhinos look to try and go round the fringes. They're picking and going and driving. Mayer is looking out to the right. Ball is short now. And then the dive for the line. Are they over? I think he's got it, Nick. I think he's dived straight over the line. I think that's a try. We are checking with our TMO. Is this going to be the angle that shows us? That's a try. Oh, there is a ball. That looks there. good. Have you got the reverse angle, please, guys? That looked good as well from the first view. Huge moments, these. Just checking the reverse angle, JP, where I think it'll confirm you yeah. may award the try. The try we have seen was grounded, so now this is Carl Mayer, who's barely put a foot wrong to go for a two-point conversion jeopardy kick to win the game. Oh, it's brilliant from Mayer! 
The flags are raised. London Royals are beaten right at the death. And look what it means to the Rhinos. They have beaten the London Royals in our last game of day one by seven points to six.